But uh, there's uh, things the Bible teaches that can hinder your prayers. And I'm telling you, until I'm like Elijah here, I can pray for it to rain and rain, pray for it to stop and stop. I, say, I know I've always got work to do. I've always got more righteousness to try to yield myself to. You know, uh, Elijah, when it come time to do something right, make the right choice, he made the right choice. He, the Bible's clear. He went more of no more special abilities than we are. He just made the right choices. And for that reward, when he what he prayed for, he got and uh, and God does if you're you pray in your closet what you do in private the Lord will reward you openly and uh, so we always got uh, I don't know about you but I got a lot of prayers that needs to be answered and the Bible also says if you ask not you have not there's a lot of prayers we don't have answered because we ain't prayed for it yet so we need to be praying a lot pray pray without <clears throat> ceasing but uh, tonight I'm just going to preach a little bit on how important it is to win lost souls, and what how how the Bible, uh, the tone of the Bible is emer- is urgency. And I, I tell you, when I worked in a restaurant, one of the most frustrating things in the world was to be with a cook that had no sense of urgency. And you'd be getting busy, 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 and they're just taking their sweet time and pulling their tea, grab one. You're like, look, we got to get this out, or we're going to get backed up. It's important. We got to have urgency. And uh, so, uh, and, and, and the tone of Christianity is like, hey, Jesus, come back soon. Be ready. You know, don't get attached to material things. Even be single and have family if you can handle it. Nothing wrong with having family, good to have a family. But the Bible just teaches time's coming quick. And, and, and uh, we, we're limited on time we have here. And uh, their soul's going to hell every day. You open up the obituary, the Granger today, or the Morristown paper. I promise you, not every every name you read is going to heaven, and that's sad. And uh, and 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 I don't know about you guys, but I'm not approached a lot by people I don't know about going to church or, or having gospel preached to me. People don't know I'm a pastor of a church. People don't know I'm a preacher. People don't know I'm a Christian. So you all get a lot of people approach you uh, about Christianity, about coming to church, about God. That's a shame, ain't it? I used to people would wire out the doors. Used to people had churches have camp meetings and get-togethers. And uh, today it's like a well, where's your urgency at? Another thing, working in a restaurant, there's really bad is when the people didn't have care. And if they didn't have care, how can you, you take care of the customers good? And how could you take care of the business good or make your food good if people were just doing it to be doing it? And a, a boss told me one time, he said, uh, you can't teach care. They either have care or they don't. We need to care about the gospel. We need to care about lost souls. Because I promise you, Jesus cared about lost souls. He came down from heaven and lived a normal uh, life of, without luxury, without heaven. And I don't know about you, I'd hate to give up heaven to come down to this old place when you be treated the way he was. But he came did it for us because he cared. And we need to care for the lost souls out here. We need to care for these people that's dying and going to hell. We need to care for these people that's in anguish and misery. And then a lot of them don't know. A lot of them knows the gospel. A lot of them knows the source of their problems and misery. A lot of them does not know because we haven't told them. And you can't do things contrary God told us to do and expect to have a great, wonderful, prosperous, blessed, happy, joyful life. It don't work that way. And I'll go ahead and get, get into the scripture. The, the title tonight is just simple, Lost Sheep. sheep. Yeah. Lost Sheep. All right. I like sheep, don't you? I think it's the prettiest animal right there. Uh, one day I'm going to have what you see right there. I'm going to pretty white sheep. Those are not real expensive sheep. The ones I got are expensive. I want to have mates for them. They're like $500 a piece. So I'm going to have to tone it down and go to the... Cheaper ones, okay. Matthew chapter 28. Chloe, you're really distracting me bad. Would you please sit down and settle down, please? I don't need no talking from nobody. This is God's time. We need to sit down and pay attention and listen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now let me hurry up and tell you what's happening. He's... Get ready to sin. This is the last few verses in the whole book of Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. He's getting ready to go up into heaven. He's done resurrected. He's done come back to the uh, disciples. He's done come back to the 500, whatever. He didn't talk to his brother James. Now he's getting ready to go up into heaven. This is his last word to his disciples before he goes up. Also, you can read Mark 16, the last part of it, to see what he instructed them, told them to do. 
But I wanted to read this tonight. I want to talk about this. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now what's this say to do? Make disciples or teach all nations? There's, there's a difference in teach all nations and make disciples. Uh, and all the new translations and stuff, most of them will say, Go ye therefore and make disciples. Okay, and I'm going to get in a second why it don't mean that, why messing the monkey in with the Bible is a horrible thing to do. But it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It says Jesus only. No, it says baptize them, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. And Acts, there's two accounts of them baptizing in Jesus' name. In context, it was just saying that there were but one... A person was baptized or a group of people was baptized in the name of John Baptist baptism. This time they're going to be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, but Jesus gave a clear instruction in the red letters, King James Bible, baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's how we're supposed to do it. And people get crazy. The apostolics get crazy. No, it's Jesus only. Oh, we only baptize Jesus only. Well, this commandment comes from Jesus. And you can follow man if you want to and get caught up in some weird teaching. I'm going to go with Jesus. When I baptize somebody, I say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, like the Bible says. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So it's saying Jesus is telling everybody that obey what I'm teach everybody to obey what I'm uh, uh, commanding you to do. Uh, Peter, you go out to the Jews and you also go out to Gentiles. When you get out there, you tell them to obey what I say. Now, some people twisted the Bible and saying that Paul and Jesus had two different doctrines. Uh, Jesus is only for the Jews and Paul is for the Gentiles. That's garbage. That's trash. Jesus' teachings for everybody. Uh, Jesus and Paul's uh, teachings do not contradict each other. Uh, uh, but if I had to choose between Jesus and Paul, I'd choose Jesus because Jesus is God. Paul not. But Paul did not contradict Jesus. There's not two separate Gospels. It's the same Gospel. And if it's recorded in the Bible or canonized Bible, uh, it, it's uh, divinely uh, written and inspired by the Holy Ghost. And it is the Word of God. And uh, But back up here, I want to get back into verse 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Uh, teach all nations and go ye therefore and make disciples. It's two different uh, sentences. Well, big deal. Who cares? I'll tell you why it's a big deal. I'll tell you why it's care. Because there's a sense of urgency. Uh, if uh, Jesus said, go and teach all nations, that's a, a quicker job. If, if, if Jesus told me, hey, go teach everybody and be stationed and to obey my commandments. Go tell everybody about me. Does that mean that I had to go one person at a time, spend all day with them, go to the next person, spend all day with them, and then go back next week, start all over again? That slows down the process a lot. Once you're saved, guess what? It's your responsibility to you make a disciple of yourself. Because we got we got to move. We got to uh, get speed up the deal. And I've been part of churches. It always, always is the same thing. They have programs because make disciples program. I know right then that they used the NIV and stuff like that because it says here teach all nations there says to make disciples and they've always said man it is so hard to, to uh, make disciples it's so hard it's programs they never work they never work and I hear that all the time I say well one reason they never work is not what Jesus told us to do he said teach all nations and I said now make disciples and you guys are responsible of uh, uh, making yourself disciples I, 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 I we have Sunday school class come to it you'll become a disciple but I can't sit there and, and, and teach a hundred people all day long every day because it just slows you down. You got your own. I got a job to do. You got a job to do. You're responsible for yourself. And look 10. Out of these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two uh, before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. So Jesus is sitting out in Israel, uh, the disciples in pairs, two by two, uh, to go out and preach his word, to get everybody in Israel ready for Jesus coming. And, and every single town, you can imagine, if, if this area right here is Israel, uh, he'd send every, uh, at least two disciples go to Rutledge, at least two disciples go to Bean Station, so at least two disciples uh, would go to Mooresburg, at least two disciples would go to Tazewell, at least two disciples would go to Morristown. And this is what he, what he told them to do when they went. And uh, uh, 
And uh, he said, until verse 2, Therefore he said to them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Same today. The harvest is huge out there, uh, but the laborers are few. Like I said again, how many of you guys have been approached by somebody from a, 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 a Christian out there saying, hey, would you like to hear the gospel? I don't ever get approached by nobody, hardly at all. I hardly ever see people handing out tracts. I hardly ever see people street preaching. I mean, I, I see them do it, but it's not as common as it needs to be. I don't see a church doing drives to to uh, outreach uh, uh, the community and towns like, like they used to, uh, and people just don't want to be bothered no more. But Jesus is telling them, and the same thing goes for us. We got to go out. We got to minister. We got to try to win people. We got to work. We got a job to do. The harvest is plenty. Laborers are few. Pray you therefore, Lord, of the harvest. They would send forth laborers and his harvest. Uh, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And I'm telling you right now, uh, if you think you're going to get into ministry or even go to church and you'll never have a problem, you'll never uh, people won't talk about you, uh, you won't get mad every now and then, uh, the kids won't fight or something. Uh, and I'm telling you something about the kids. Uh, the mean kids need to be here. But when mean kids get here, guess what? They're going to be a little bit harder to handle than the good kids. But the mean kids need to be here. The good kids need to be here. Adults need to act like adults when it comes to kid situation. We can't expect the kids to go out there and act like uh, Andy Griffith show or something. The kids are going to be acting up every now and then. But I do ask you kids, like I said earlier, let's keep this altar reverent. This ain't a trampoline. This ain't a, 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 a playpen up here. Well, somebody asked me one time if I would put a playpen up there for their babies while we're having church. I said, absolutely not. I want babies here, but I don't I, I don't want everybody looking at babies instead of me when we're preaching. Uh, we need to keep this uh, altar reverent and uh, I've got my lapel. Anyway, um, go your ways. Behold, I see you forth lands among wolves. Is that clear? There's going to be wolves out there. It's going to be dangerous. You'll get spit on. You'll get talked about. You might get beat up. You might be uh, persecuted. This country, not so bad, but uh, you might get shot. I watched a video the other day, a guy walking through a, a country, it looked like a Latin America country, and he had a, a speaker on his back, and he had a megaphone, and he was walking through neighborhoods preaching, and a man come out with a horse whip, and I mean wore the dude out, and the harder that dude hit him, the louder he'd preach at him. I don't know what he was saying, because I, I, I didn't have the interpretation of them tongues, but he's preaching something in Spanish, and he was getting cussed and whipped in Spanish, but I tell you, he preached the gospel anyway. He didn't back down, he didn't run. He cared for that man's soul. Obviously, that man's soul wasn't right if he would hit a preacher man with a bull whip as hard as he can. But I take it, it's going to take some brave souls in these last days. It's going to take some bold people. People ain't afraid. People ain't scared to share the gospel. I like it. Ezra puts me on the spot sometime. I'll go pay a bill and I'll hand a woman money in the envelope. And Ezra's like, why didn't you put a business card in there. He's right. Why didn't I put a business? Why am I scared of the water bill lately? Uh, we don't need to be scared of no human. We don't need to be scared of no man. And we don't need to worry about, uh, uh, never be scared of telling people about Jesus. I had a friend one time, that man, uh, he reminded me of Ezra a lot, but like an older version. He wasn't worried about what people thought about him at all. He couldn't sing a lick, but he tried to sing every time music was going. Uh, he couldn't, uh, he preached pretty good. He was a good preacher. But the man, I tell you, we would go out and I'd hang out with him. Every soul, Every human being that would come well, within talking distance of him, he would tell about Jesus and he would bring them to church. And just that one man alone brought hundreds and hundreds of people to the church I was going to just by being bold. Just not worrying about what man thinks. Not worry about what man cared about. He was worried about their soul. He was worried about sharing the gospel. Man, he had fruit. God seen, uh, I'd seen God do great things through that guy's ministry. We was at Water State one time and this woman I had class with. She's sitting on the bench going, oh, oh, Lordy, you know, I can't get up. I can't get up. And she had half a mile to walk to her car. I said, honey, what's wrong? She goes, I can't get up. My back's out. It's hurting. I said, I got my friend with me. Uh, he's a preacher. Do you believe laying hands on the sick and they shall recover? And she's like, yeah. She goes, I'm church of God. I believe in that. So get him over here. And right in front of everybody in Wilder State, the big atheist capital of Morristown, uh, when we gather around, he's praying. He's like, I, uh, I command this back pain to be healed and 
name of Jesus. And I just remember he had his hand out harder and slobbering. And everybody's laughing at him, pointing fingers. And that woman's sitting there praising the Lord. And boom, an instant healing. She's like, oh, my back's healed. Thank you, Lord. And she's praising God. He's praising God. And I'm sitting there looking around. Everybody laughing. I just make fun of her. She wasn't laughing. She wasn't skipped to the car. Couldn't even get, uh, stand up and walk. And uh, uh, so I believe in him. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've experienced it a lot. James said uh, this morning we was talking that his mom had a cancer on her nose. You can see the bone on her nose. She's out on the porch pray for healing. God healed her and said that she called James up and said, look, James, cancer is gone. Not even a scar there. And I tell you, God wants to heal. That's God's will to heal. Uh, 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 we're supposed to be walking around and get to healing, but we had to seek it. We had to earnestly say, we're commanded to earnestly seek these gifts. I want these gifts. I don't know about you. I want them. I, whatever I'm doing is keeping my prayers from being answered. I want to change that. Whatever I'm doing is hindering my prayers to come in the past. I want that to change. I need me to change a lot. I want to see things happening. I want to see people getting healed. I want to see people getting saved. I ain't baptized nobody in a while. I want to be baptizing. I want to be baptizing people every Sunday. I, 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 the labor, the harvest plenty, labor a few. Use me, Lord. Let me work, God. God, open doors for us. Open doors for all of us to be used. I want when we come to church and, uh, and we're asking for praise reports. I want the praise reports for last for 30 minutes. And you know, we might hear one praise report a month, but we'll hear uh, uh, 30 uh, prayer requests every week and all the miserable stuff going on. I want I want that to be opposite. I want to say, yeah, you know, I want for 30 minutes, we're talking about people being healed, saved, baptized, uh, uh, lives coming around. Hey, that's the good life. That's something to seek after. That's, a, that's the urgency that the Bible, the tone of the Bible, the context of the Bible, that's the kind of urgency. It's speaking, it's talking. This verse right here, this is why I'm telling you, leave them jump Bibles alone. Stick with the God's divine word. God didn't give the English people a dumb Bible for 300 years before we got these new ones. Not a one of them's ever topped the King James Bible. Uh, uh, that's the number one selling book of all time. It's the number one book of all time that's ever been on this earth. It wasn't a bunch of idiots who put it together. God knew what he's doing. More people speak English than any language in the world. What's the number one Bible in English. It's a King James. Them guys was not dumb. And God didn't say, I'll get I will preserve my Bible concordance. I can preserve my Bible dictionary. He said we preserve his Bible words. And I tell you, there's a lot of confusion today because we want to monkey around with everything. But he said, teach all nations, not make disciples. And because making disciples will slow us down. Read this right here. What he told the disciples. Carry neither purse. Uh, and, and let me let me just clarify. That's not talking about a pocketbook. Obviously, they don't carry around a big woman's pocketbook. You had to clarify that in 2021. That was just something that kept their money in, you know. Nor script, nor shoes. Uh, and salute no man by the way. Now, what does salute no man by the way means? That means when God said, you, disciples, go to that town. Peter, James, go to the town of uh, Joppa and, and, and get them ready for me. Yes, Lord. And he equipped them. He said, don't take no extra junk with you and don't even greet no man on the way. Why not greet no man on the way? You know, greet no man like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Are you doing any good today? Hey, how you? No, because that slows you down. And God don't want nothing in our life that's going to slow us down. We need to get urgent about this. We need to get busy with this. We need to get with it. and Because uh, time is short. Uh, uh, where every day, we're a week closer to the world in than we was uh, a week ago. We're a week closer to Jesus coming back than we was a week ago. And, and uh, the next week, guess what? We're going to be a week closer to Jesus coming back today. What are we done between the, this Sunday and next Sunday? What are we going to do between this Sunday and next Sunday? But Jesus told him, not even salute no man away. Get to the town. Do your business. Get to the next town. Do your business. Get in the next town. Do your business. And cut out the fluff. Cut out the time wasting. Uh, be, be productive and be urgent and care. Amen. Same chapter, verse 5. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, peace be into this house. If the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn into you again. And that same house remain. Eating and drinking such things as they give, for labor is worthy as hire. Go not from house to house. And Jesus tells them, you go to the house, 
If it feels like you're welcome, there's peace there. You know, Christine, when she used to go here, she used to travel the country, talk about monster drinks and protesting Muslims and gay marriage and all that. Said she stayed in a lot of houses. And said she'd go to some houses, you know, these good old Christian people, and they'd turn on to our movies and start cussing less or right. She said, no peace in that house. And she'd have to get up and get out of there. She goes, I don't have peace. But if, the, if she's at a house and the disciples went to a house, there's peace there. They're welcome there. The Lord's uh, presence is there. That's where they stay. They don't go to a house, a uh, two-bedroom house. People's kind of poor. They got beans and taters to eat. And then some down the road, somebody's got a 50-room mansion and got steak and lobster. Say, won't you guys come down here and stay? Stay at Joel Osteen's house, you know. And, uh, and the disciples say, nope. God told us the first house we come to it has peace. We stay. We don't bounce around house to house. And I'm telling you kids right now, a lot of you don't need to be staying to everybody. You need to stay home, especially you older teenagers. You don't need to be spending the night with everybody in school. You don't need to be staying with friends all the time. I know. I was a teenager once myself. That's where the trouble starts. Uh, you watch these kids that's got a lot of freedom. It's like kids that's got a lot of freedom. It's going to get you in trouble. They're going to get themselves in trouble. And I can preach my heart out. I can warn you about all the bad things that happen if you fall into sin. But if you decide not to listen to me, and trust me, I've grown up in church. I grew up, people didn't pay no attention to the Bible. I grew up, the teenagers didn't listen to the preacher. Teenagers didn't listen to mom and dad. And there was hell to pay. And there'll be hell to pay if you don't listen to the word of God, you kids. I promise you. And if you decide you're going to live the way you want to do, you listen to these stupid idiot uh, YouTubers and these stupid idiot uh, movie stars and rappers and, and rock stars and telling you to live however you want to, everything be fine, I promise you it won't be fine. And then whenever uh, 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 the sin, the pleasure is over and you find yourself living a miserable life and reaping the uh, repercussions of sin, and guess what? You're going to see my ugly face for the rest of your life. You say, I should have listened to that big old ugly man out there instead of these uh, idiot women shaking their behinds uh, at, the, at, the, at the phones and cameras. Man, how stupid. Stupid that the world uh, and the women turn around shaking their dumb behinds like a, like a, 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 a tambourine uh, has more influence than the Word of God on the world today. They make people stupid. If you're following a big old shaking behind, shame on you. Them people ain't got no sense. The devil's sending them out there to make you girls, make you guys dumb, to make you stupid, to make you do stupid things. Follow the word of God. You will have a much better life. I want your testimonies to be. I, I never drank. I never uh, did dope. I never did drugs. I never slept around. I just got saved. Stay saved. Live the good, holy life. That needs to be your testimony. That's my goal here. I don't want these kids out here running around like a bunch of wild dogs. I want these kids out here living like a bunch of heathens. I want to warn them. I want to tell them, beware of that stuff. And I'm not letting that stuff come here. You want to choose sleeping around uh, out here because uh, uh, the butt shakers tell you to? Then I don't want you coming to this church washing off on everybody else. We're not going to drive to your house, pick you up, bring you to church if you're out there fornicating, sleeping around, doing drugs. Because that ain't coming in this church. Uh, we want you here. But you're going to be getting your own way if you're out here uh, uh, living like the devil. Because I'm protecting Protector. I'm a shepherd. I'm a pastor. I got to protect my flock. I've watched you groups. They be on fire for God, loving God. And all of a sudden, somebody's out here running around, messing around because they're following the stupid Hollywood and the Netflix and the world. And, and, and then they come back to church. Oh, yeah, it's so fun. And they're embarrassed and they're ashamed, but they act like it's fun because they want to drag everybody else into it. They don't want to be the only ones who make a mistake. They watch a whole youth group fall into sin. And, and, and a little leaven, leaven's the whole lumps what the Bible said. A little bit of sin come in and wash off on everybody. My job is to protect everybody in here. You don't need to fall into sin. It's dangerous. You adults don't need to fall into sin. You men, be careful of the women out there. If they're not your wife, be very careful. Uh, you women, be careful of the men out there. If they're not your husband, be careful. The Bible tells you to be shamefaced. Women's not to be around me going, oh, how you doing, man? You're supposed to be shamefaced. That's what the Bible teaches. The danger starts when women don't be shamefaced. The Bible's uh, women's got, you know, they got bodies and they got movements. And women, don't you sit there and make that stuff move the ways they don't need to be moving to impress men. I tell you, we don't need that stuff. That's unholy. It's unrighteous. That's ungodly. Okay, back to this. And the same house remaining drinking, they give laborers worthy is higher. 
go not from house to house. And whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things set before you. And heal the sick they're, they're in. And say it to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. But into whatsoever you say, say to you enter, receive you, not go your ways out to the streets of the same as say. Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. By saying to you, this should be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. And I tell you, it goes for individual people too. If you've heard the word of God and you reject it, uh, we're to wipe the dust off our feet. One reason they wiped the dust off their feet because when they went and healed all the sick people and got people saved and they baptized some people and, and, and God had come to town to visit the town and uh, those are going to be those that are blessed. Those will be living for God. And then, uh, they, then you got the ones that the devil uh, somehow, some way convinced it's not a good idea to live for God. And they live a cursed life. Their town was cursed. When the town rejected the Jesus, they brought a curse upon it. And uh, Jesus said it's better for Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have no preachers come warn them. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have no outreach or evangelists or see Jesus do miracles. He said they would have repented sackcloth and ashes. They've seen some of the cities that, that see what Jesus did. You all seen Jesus do great things. You've heard testimonies how Jesus improved our life. Jesus improved my life. Jesus improved Gary's life. James, Bobby's, Jenny's, everybody. And, and when you turn your back on Jesus and you don't live for him, cursed you are. If a city, a town, turns your back on Jesus, knowing what he's done and what he can do, curse in that city. The dirt's cursed. That's why Jesus said, get it off your shoe. You don't want that cursed dirt on your shoe. Luke 15. Then drew near to whom all the publicans, the sinner, for to hear him. I wish they'd do it here. What we're going to do, I tell you why you get them. I tell you how you get publicans sinner in here. Back up to where he says, heal the sick. They start seeing people get sick and uh, sick getting healed. They'll be in here. That's why we need to earnestly seek for that. Hey, I don't know a lot of people dream about being NBA stars, movie stars, millionaires, sexually. I dream about just being able to sit in a prayer closet all day, starving to death, praying. That's my dream. That's a weird dream, ain't it? And you think that should be easy. Go sit in a prayer closet all day, starving to death. It ain't easy. There's a lot of distractions. A lot of stuff comes up. It's hard. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. That's why I need prayers. That's why I need people to pray for me. And, uh, 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 and the Pharisees and scribes remember saying, this man received sinners and eat it with them. How dare he? That's what they're saying, you know. The religious crowd, the publicans, the ones supposed to be out there trying to get people to God, didn't know God, know nothing about God. And he spoke this parable to them saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? And that's showing you these lost people out there. We were important. God died for all of us, but we're in. We're in God's fold. But the, the, what's important to him right now and more important is the lost ones. Uh, 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 we're supposed to go after the lost sheep. Uh, it says when, when one man repents, or a woman repents, uh, there's joy in the presence of the angel. The heavens shout, the, the heavens celebrate when a human being, an eternal soul, comes back to God, or comes to God. And, and you don't care what you've done, you can come back to God. And uh, that's called grace. That's a good thing. But we got to go out to these sinners, people. I'm telling you, man, I don't know why. Uh, let's pray, church. Let's pray for a burden of lost souls. Pray I get more burden of lost souls. Pray I don't get distracted with worldly things. Uh, uh, pray, pray. I mean, we got a job to do. It's urgency. I feel urgency. I don't know. Do y'all feel an urgency? Don't you feel your flesh, your spirit knows it's urgent, but you feel your flesh kind of dragging you? Uh, we got to overcome that. We got to spend more time in prayer, more time in word, uh, in the word. Uh, you know, we can't. We can't be skipping church. We only had three services a week now. If possible, make them if possible. If it's not possible, you're not possible. But make them if possible. And I'm telling you, man, church helps. Church helps you stay stronger. Church helps you to grow. It's hard to spend all day, every day out there in the world and just get church once or twice a month to stay strong. It's hard. Last, last verse. And when he had found it, he lay it on his shoulders. Just talking about the lost sheep. When we come home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep was lost. 
I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over 99 just person which need no repentance. So I'm showing you the lost people out there. They're important. They got a higher priority than we do. They're on God's priority list higher than we are because we are in. God wants us to go after that. The labor, the harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. What are we going to do this week? Uh, if, and I'm learning this the hard way. If I make plans, oh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to fast. I'm going to go pray for about two or three hours. I'm going to read like 10 chapters. And then, then tomorrow comes and I don't feel like doing that. I got stuff to do. Things come up. I said, man, I should have done it yesterday when I had more free time. That's how we're supposed to live day by day. What are you going to do the rest of the night? Uh, are you going to try to seek God or are you going to go out and uh, play on the phone all night? Are you going to try to pray a few minutes or are you going to go home and watch some R-rated movie, a PG movie? Uh, uh, what are you going to do tomorrow? you going to put it off another week or two? Or you say, all right, Lord, you get out of bed. You say, God, I praise you. I love you, God. I'm going to serve you today. I'm going to live for you today. I'm not, you're the potter and I'm the clay. Uh, use me. Guide me. Lead me. God, uh, 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 the harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. Lead me to that lost sheep that's out there. Lead me to the lost sheep that you're earning for to come back to your kingdom. Uh, I want to make heaven rejoice. I want to make heaven rejoice every day. I want us to rejoice in this church when we're hearing praise reports for, for 30 minutes. What are we going to do this week, next week, and the next? Time's short. One day we're going to wake up. And we're, it's too late. We've won who we're going to want, win, and who we missed, we missed. How many people in here has got loved ones that needs the Lord? How many people in here has got a family that needs God? How many people in here has got friends that needs to be saved? Well, I tell you, if we miss the boat, we don't preach to them, we don't show them a good Christian witness, if we don't show them love and care or share the gospel with them or just you know something, pray for them. Then when Jesus comes back, they missed it. They missed it. And I don't want people to miss Jesus' is coming because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I want this church, man, I want it to be on fire. I don't care about building a name for myself. Actually, I hurt my name. If you preach the truth, your name gets tarnished. I want this church that I want people to know this place is serious. And I'm going to tell you people about this church here. Outside of this church, I've been alone with almost everybody in here outside of church, not, you know, or, or away from church, not necessarily alone, but outside of church, hanging out with them. We talk about God as much as we do outside these doors, we do inside these doors. And it always hurt my feelings when I be with church people. We just talk about God at church, and as soon as we leave, it's all ball games, Fox News, uh, weather, and all that. I want to still hear about God. And we ain't nobody here perfect. Don't ever put, think that we're all walking on water. But I want to tell you, people out here are serious. We have our shortcomings. We have our faults. But we are serious about God. That's why I love this place. That's what separates us from a lot of places is that we are serious. You catch Tyler out by himself uh, listening to stuff. He's usually listening to stuff to help him learn the Bible. Sean the same way. Gary the same way. Jenny the same way. Uh, I like walking up on people not knowing I'm going to be there. And they're studying the Bible, listening to Christian music, preaching and stuff. It's a blessing to me. It's a blessing to me. Every soul that's in here tonight, every soul that's here this morning, everybody I see walk through the door, it's encouragement. It's a blessing. And don't think that we're here to play. We're not here to play. We are serious. What we say, what we, we're trying to practice what we preach. And I'm done. Does anybody got anything to say? Gary, say something so I'll be quiet. <sighs> Please. <laughs> I'm going to be bossy. Yes, Chloe. Say that again, please. We always love Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we always will obey him too, right, Chloe? Yeah.